up until now, uh, China has been a, a critical buffer for the world when it has um, gone into recession in the past. That was certainly the case um, uh, during the global financial crisis and its immediate aftermath. Um, and <clears throat> that is unlikely to be the case this time. The, the China cushion that we have counted on for so long uh, is um, basically vanished into thin air. And I just want to underscore a couple of numbers. Um, in the um, uh, 2012 to 2016 period, just a few years after the global uh, financial crisis, uh, the world economy grew on, on average 3.4% uh, during that six year period. China grew about 7.5%. It accounted for 34% of all of global GDP during those six years. Do a little bit of um, uh, global growth accounting and you will find that absent China during those six years, uh, world economic growth uh, did not uh, uh, come close to 3.4%, but in fact averaged 2.3%. And typically we think of the global recession threshold at around two and a half percent. So the China cushion is really what kept the world uh, from um, lapsing back into renewed recession in the aftermath of the global financial crisis. You think China's gonna average seven and a half percent over the next few years and do the same thing uh, several factors at work to think about in looking at China over the next several years. One, um, ongoing lockdowns from this ridiculous zero COVID policy. There's a view that, um, well, as soon as uh, Xi Jinping gets reanointed to his uh, third five year term uh, in, in less than a month, he'll stop that. I wouldn't count on that. Number two, the, um, the carnage in the property sector as part of China's ongoing deleveraging campaign is likely to continue. Uh, China has made it very clear it does not want to be uh, the next Japan. Three, the uh, uh, supply chain disruptions play a hugely, have a hugely disproportionate impact on China because so much of the growth in global supply chains, which Professor Baldwin is one of the great experts on, uh, has been driven uh, by China. Uh, number four, the regulatory pressures that have been brought to bear on what had been China's most dynamic sector, the internet platform companies, they're going to continue because of a sort of a social morality play that Xi Jinping is committed to um, uh, continuing. Uh, and uh, fifth, uh, demographic headwinds. The economy is aging. The working age population is shrinking. The total population is probably shrinking now much, much quicker than any of us thought. And um, when you have slowing population growth, especially slowing working age population growth, you need a powerful offset from productivity growth to keep your economy growing, and that's not occurring uh, in China for several of the reasons I just addressed. And then uh, the point that Professor Baldwin uh, made as well, uh, the geopolitical pressures, um, they're obviously bearing very acutely on China, not just with respect to the US, but with respect to the role it is playing as uh, Russia's new unlimited partner. And China's coming very close to crossing the line in providing support uh, to the pariah Russian state. And if it does that, it will find itself judged guilty by association uh, and subject to similar sanctions 
that the world is imposing on China. The U.S., China, and Europe are 49% of world GDP. Who's going to fill the void uh, if the three engines uh, are out of fuel or sputtering? I don't see anyone. So I think uh, 2023, you know, I, I may regret and I may end up swallowing a lot of glass. I think 2023 is a year of global recession. Thank you.